Hello. Hello. My name is Julie and I'm invited to a wedding. So I'm going to turn this piece of fabric, it's three meters by the way, into a lovely guest wedding dress. So here we go. And here is the dress. It has a cold neckline, a wavy skirt with a high slit and a corset like back. I'm going to start by showing you how to make the pattern for the top, for the coal neckline and the corset back. I am the kind of person who saves money whenever I can. So for pattern paper, I'm using the paper that we used to protect our floors when we painted our house. So I pasted two of those together and this is big enough to start making the pattern. As a base for the pattern, I'm going to use a t-shirt that has a good to a large fit and I folded the sleeves inside. And now this is very important. I'm going to flip over the neckline because you don't need this for the pattern. And then I drew the shape of the t-shirt onto the piece of paper. This is step one. For step two, I took the fabric and I decided what depth or length I wanted the coal in the neckline to have. I swifted this around a little bit in front of a mirror and then I decided on 47 centimeter or 18 and a half inches. And now I'm going to add this to the pattern. So I added these measurements to both of the sides and now the upper line of your pattern should be 47 centimeters or 18 and a half inches or any other length that you decide to give it. Then I adjusted the armholes by connecting this upper line to the end of the armholes in a curve. And now I'm going to cut this out, but I will not cut the upper line yet because I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to copy the armholes again, connect them with a the line and cut this out. You need to do this to make a good call neckline top. Why will get clear in a minute. Before I cut the pattern out of the fabric, please say hi to this very cute dog by leaving this video a like and saying hi and how cute he is down below in the comments. Next, I placed that pattern on the fabric and I'm going to use these beer glasses and beer bottles as weights as I'm too cheap to actually buy some. And next, I carefully cut out the pattern while shifting around my makeshift weights to have a beautiful cut. Now, when you fold down the extra armhole part that we cuts you actually have the shape for your coal neckline top and you can already fit this on you if you wish to then i made the back pattern so i started by copying the shape of the front pattern and now i'm going to measure 15 centimeters or 5.9 inches from the edge i chose this length because this leaves a part of my back open and this is where i will create the corset back once i drew this i connected the piece so it would be complete then i drew a big b on it and i cut it out and I'm going to do the same as for the front pattern. I neatly placed it on my fabric. I used the same weights and I cut this out. Be sure to cut this in mirror image so you have a two matching side pieces. Then I pinned the extra fabric we made at the armholes down. This makes it easier for me to add the back pieces uh, to the front. Next, I added the back pieces to the front. I sewn this twice with a simple straight stitch. And here you have the top part. To give the top part a neat finish, I first ironed it flat and then I fold it over all of the visible edges. And I'm going to sew this with a simple straight stitch. This creates a neat finish. And now we need to make some straps to make this core neckline core. I'm going to make these straps by cutting a big strap uh, that is eight centimeter or three inches in width and a meter in length. 
Now, if I could do this again, I would make this a meter and a half because I really thought at the end that I could use some extra length on the strap. So I would advise you to make them as long as possible because it's easier to cut them off than to add them on. So I carefully cut this strap and I'm going to fold this in half and sew a straight line, uh, two thirds of the edge of the strap. And now it's time to turn this to around to create this into a beautiful thin strap. I did this by pinning a safety pin onto the end and I'm using this to guide me through the strap. This is quite tedious work, so I advise making it easier by listening to a podcast or watching something you like while you do this. Now I'm going to pin down that extra armhole piece that I added. And I'm going to slide the straps on the upper edge of this and sew this with a simple straight stitch to make the core neckline. So I sew this very carefully as this is visible on the final project. And this finishes the top for now. We're first going to make the skirt, then I will add the top to the skirt and then I will finish up the corset back. Before I cut the skirt, I took a couple of measurements. Now you have to decide if you want your skirt to have a zipper or an elastic. I chose the elastic because it's a wedding, there's a lot of eating involved and I will get bloated. So if you also want to use an elastic, you have to measure your breast area because this is the biggest part that you will pull the dress over. If you choose to use a zipper, then you can simply measure your belly. Now I'm going to use those measurements to cut half a circle skirt with a high slit. So you take the measurement and you divide it by 3.14 or pi. Now I'm going to add 10 centimeters or 4 inches to this. This will give you room to create the slit. This measurement will form the little circle. Now I'm going to take the measurement of the little circle and add my desired skirt length to that. And this will form the big circle. Then I took a piece of tape and I used the weights to draw the little and the big circle onto the fabric. And I cut this out. And here you have my half a circle skirt that is big enough to create a slit. I first zigzag stitched around the edges of the skirt to prevent them from unraveling in the washing machine. And now I'm going to fold over the sides of the skirt and sew this so they look neatly finished as they will be visible on the final project. If you have chosen to add an elastic, you will have to measure the part that the elastic will shrink uh, before you can continue. So I did this by retracting my waist area from my breast area and I put a pin here. Then I fit the skirt and I decided where I wanted the slit to be and I pinned this in place. Then I simply unpinned the pin in the back and this way I could take it off. And then I sewn the slit closed on the top with a zigzag stitch. And here you have what the skirt looks like. Now I can easily put this on because the elastic is not in yet. And here you have the skirt and the slit. Then I cut the elastic one third of the back of the skirt. And for me, this one was a little bit too wide. So I folded it double and I zigzag stitched it to make it smaller. Next, I pinned the elastic to the back of the skirt and I'm going to sew this also using a zigzag stitch. Make sure when you do this that you pull the elastic out completely while you sew it. Now the skirt has an elastic inside, so I put it on to make sure that it had a good fit. Now I'm going to finish up the skirt by flipping over the elastic and also the rest of the skirt. And I sewn this with a simple straight stitch and this finishes off the waistband of the skirt and also the skirt. Now all that's left to do is to add the top. 
Before I attach the top to the skirt, I added fusible inner facing to the edges. And then I folded and sewn this. I did this because I'm going to add the belt loops to these and I wanted it to have some extra security. Once this was done, I pinned and sewn the top to the skirt. Make sure that the part that is open in the back is also the part with the elastic in the waistband. Now it's time for the last step of this project, adding the belt loops, which will create the corset like back. So I started by cutting a big strap, then I folded it double. And in the same way as I did for the shoulder straps, I sewn in the middle and then I turned this around with a safety pin and I ironed this flat. Now I'm going to cut this strap into pieces of eight centimeters. I think that's somewhere around three inches. Then I folded these pieces in half to create the loop and I secured the end with a zigzag stitch. I also did this to prevent this from unraveling in the washing machine. Now I'm going to pin this to the back. I decided to pin three loops to each side. Then I sewn this with a straight stitch as this will also be visible at the end project. Please do this carefully and neatly. This dress has a little secret. As I was tying up the back, you can tie this the same way as you tie your shoelaces, I realized that I would have to finish this up with a bow. But for some reasons, bows always give me anxiety because I can never seem to tie them in a neat way that I want them. So I decided to add two extra belt loops underneath the waistband. What this does is that it gives you an opportunity to knot them, but to hide the knot so no one can see it. And that was it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching all the way until the end. I hope that you learned something. If there is anything that I can learn from you, please let me know in the comments below. Also, English is not my first language. So if you hear me make some mistakes, also feel free to correct me as this can only help me learn. In case that you are curious on how I wore the dress, the theme of the wedding was a white, green and gold. So I added golden shoes, golden earrings, I painted my nails gold and I added a golden scarf. I had a white blazer but it was so hot that I did not need it. And I also had these handy golden foldable flats with me, what my feet were very thankful for after a night of dancing. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Bye!